Canada's premier green building conference is coming to downtown Toronto on June 5th and 6th. Building Lasting Change is hosted by the Canada Green Building Council. For over a decade, Building Lasting Change has demonstrated a commitment to quality speakers, insightful sessions, and meaningful networking. Over two full days, business leaders and green building implementers converge to learn and share the latest business and technical insights needed to decarbonize Canada's building sector with sustainable, low carbon, and resilient assets. Learn more and register at cagbc.org slash blc. Hello and welcome to the Construction Record Podcast. I'm Digital Media Editor Warren Fry. On this episode, I have two interviews from the recent Royal Architectural Institute of Canada's annual conference in Vancouver. The first interview features architects Graham McCarva, Richard Evans, and intern architect Tatania Vovchenko about their session about False Creek South, one of the first showcases of urban planning in Vancouver, which is now looking to revamp by building in concert with the existing community rather than replacing it. The second interview is with Williams Lake First Nation Chief Willie Sellers and M2 Architecture Inc.'s Michael McNaught, who discussed the Osprey Lake Project, a multi-purpose structure in the city of Williams Lake that acts as a gathering space, a restaurant, and features several lofts meant to act not only as accommodation for visiting professionals, but as a long-term recruiting tool to bring more people to the region. Here's that first interview about Falls Creek, followed by the Osprey Nest interview. what replan is and maybe not everybody listening to this knows what false creek south is for that matter um, so maybe you could explain the community and how it came to be any one of you guys can do it okay false creek south was a brownfield site up until the mid 60s mm-hmm. it was actually owned by the province of bc there was a deal made with the province to transfer it to the municipal um, to the municipality in exchange for the property up at sfu mm-hmm. by the way that's why so okay. uh, Simon Fraser University was created, Mm -hmm. and uh, Brownfield site, and then what to do about that became the um, the mantra in the city, and uh, uh, there was an RFP issued, and there was a number of uh, people in in groups in town that responded. Fortunately, it was at a time where pattern language, Habitat for Humanity, had just Mm -hmm. been very influential over the design thinking in the city. And that kind of sh- shaped the backbone for the responses that the city received from the design community and said, let's try something different here. And as Graham mentioned, once mm-hmm. the community was established intentionally based on these design principles, part of the intentionality was to create a um, neighborhood association that was actually mandated by the city. Mm-hmm. and that. Neighborhood Association is the umbrella organization, and Replan is a committee of that association. Mm-hmm. And, and all through, well, I mean, two of you mentioned you live in the community. Yes. I don't know if you do as well. I'm, I'm okay, good. but you have skin in the game is what I'm trying to say here. Very much so, skin yeah. in the game, yes. I live in a housing co-op in Falls Creek, and mm-hmm. I've been there for 40 years. Mm-hmm. Yes, and you also live in the community. Yes, and as I had mentioned, I got uh, to be working on Concord Pacific and right. so on, so I was able to use mm-hmm. Falls Creek South directly in mm-hmm. that and it was a great time that was the period of the 80s into the 90s of sharing amongst architects or city planners even developers in kinds of things that made Vancouver's whole downtown area more right. livable and it sort of sprang from as Richard had said the thought in the design community around Falls Creek South there was as it were a golden period where things were all working mm-hmm. And then you get to somewhere in the, I don't know, financial crash of 2008, 2010, whatever, where financialization mm-hmm. just took off and, and, and has warped what everybody's trying to, trying to remedy, you know. That leads me to my next question, or uh, what, what you said uh, was this is by the 2030s, the lease is up and you guys, yeah. that's why you guys are coming up with a new plan in the first place. Uh, but you also made a great comment. Uh, you called uh, condos, essentially the profit ch- chasing market ones, uh, safety deposit box for wealth. Yes. <laughs> and, and that kind of ties into what you were talking about before, yeah. about how you and the city sort of saw eye to eye, but then you didn't, and then it looked like they were kind of going more for the profit side of things than the community side of things. Maybe I'm mis- well, Please correct me if I'm wrong about there's that. There's various things that, that happened. Uh, Southeast Falls Creek, Olympic Village, was slated to be leasehold mm-hmm. right up until about the time they were ready to 
to uh, get ready for the Olympics and right. stuff, and someone thought, oh, it'll be good to make it market, we'll make money. Mm -hmm. It was such a big mistake that successive councils, whichever political stripe, have looked at False Creek South and said, that's going to remain leasehold. Mm -hmm. Now the question is, do you try and charge a lot of money there? Like, I remember with Gregor Robertson, uh, we came up with a plan mm -hmm. that um, the city should send all of us to live in a plot of land in Detroit, because you could get that real cheap, mm -hmm. and then sell off False Creek to multimillionaires from Asia and around, around the world. Mm -hmm. You know, clearly that would benefit the city's coffers. It would do nothing, of course. Right for citizens. So where is the balance as you ratchet mm -hmm. back to, to, is it all for poor people? Now it's like, no, workforce housing. Mm -hmm. let's, let's have police and firemen and teachers being able to live in <coughs> Vancouver Which is so what that is they now. can work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's where we look at this high density future. The community says, mm -hmm. yeah, we've got to have some of these towers and stuff, whether I like them or not, because we, we need more firefighters and mm -hmm. policemen and so on, being mm -hmm. able to, that's just the easy e e example. And, and an understanding that there's a balance. Um, we, we talk about full cost accounting. Mm -hmm. Well, you now look at the cost of having uh, no jobs of a certain right. sort in, in, uh, within the, the, the city. So we're saying, yeah, let's go for that long-term balance and with a world vision and that's we're getting bolder uh, by the month in terms of saying we can go for the, the best that c can be done the problem mm -hmm. is so big you can't just like fix it right you, you, you've got to go for something and eventually yes things will happen that any one of us won't like but our ideas at least will understand mm -hmm. Uh, and that's what we're trying to build, a community of understanding, which is what generated mm -hmm. this presentation right. in the first right. place yeah. several yeah. months ago. Sorry. And Tatiana. Tatiana. Thank you. Um, uh, what you did is you showed illustrations that kind of demonstrated mm -hmm. what some of the solutions were, like, for instance, like open air stuff and, and have, having outdoor space no matter how small it was. Make, well, you can explain it better than I could. Yeah, I guess the idea was to explore the same principles that were initially mm -hmm. uh, embedded in the... In the design of the false creek and imagine it in a well, like, I guess modern context of mm -hmm. urban scale and like how we can kind of same have the same uh, quality of life that uh, like initially residents had there uh, but in a different scale mm -hmm. so it's basically getting the same and trying to to get the maximum out of it yeah. uh, and just in terms of this kind of looming deadline which is 10 odd years away, but that goes by quicker than you think it will. Yep. Um, where are you guys at in terms of, of like, no, obviously nothing's being built just yet, but where, where in the process is it, besides the ideation that we're seeing well, here? We uh, have been told, uh, the city has now brought on board a, a team, I don't want to just make it one individual, mm -hmm. to, to really look at getting something done here. Mm -hmm. It's been down in various uh, silos. And the key thing is, is infrastructure just that part of the city. There's transportation infrastructure, there's a very much sea level rise and so on. Mm -hmm. So the city knows they have a big uh, physical infrastructure issue to know about and then to see how they can tackle the social um, infrastructure, the social benefits, the goals of workforce housing and, and so on. So we're actually uh, thinking that instead of we are being nearly demolished as we were a few years ago mm -hmm. it makes more sense for the city to just have us spend the millions that we each enclave is spending mm -hmm. on its roofs and its water pipes to keep it going for another 20 30 whatever years while this first phase stuff is built mm -hmm. so that's you know and the, and the tide is is moving continually <laughs> so. The pendulum has shifted from a few years ago where people were saying low density areas, the city of Vancouver generally, mm -hmm. should be densified because there's a cost benefit in, in doing that. Mm -hmm. We're hearing increasingly now that existing affordable housing is the most is the most cost effective out there as the cost of infrastructure increase, mm -hmm. as the cost of land increases, as the cost of construction increases. So we're starting to feel this switch. Um, to another way of thinking about the existing, which shifts the uh, onus to a longer time frame 
doing this on a more rational basis, preserving a community and knitting it into the new mm -hmm. in a more rational way. And then the leases come to play because my co-op, for example, is challenged to raise money to do capital improvements. We need longer terms to do that. Mm -hmm. And the rationale, cost benefit of being able to argue that is increasing. And so we're working on that now as well. Okay, and if there's uh, anywhere people want to see more details or more information on this, where should they go? Uh, the website is www. Uh, at replan uh, re false creek south dot org. Dot org. Great. <laughs> thank you very much. Guys. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>Chief Willie Sellers with the Williams Lake First Nation. Michael McNaught, architect from M Squared Architecture. Uh, and I'd like to start with you, uh, Chief, explained how this was a reserve land in the city of Williams Lake and it wasn't being used. And then uh, you and your council decided we're going to use this for something. Maybe you could say what you started with and then now then we'll lead into the Osprey's Nest and sort of the concept behind that. Yeah, so I mean, it's a semi-industrial uh, zoned area and we were trying to think of what we can build there that would be successful. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the first thing, it was around the 2018 legalization of cannabis in the country of Canada. So we decided we wanted to get into retail with the vision of eventually getting into cultivation. So the first two builds are a Unity retail store mm -hmm. and then our Sugar King cannabis cultivation facility. Uh, from there, you know, became the, the vision and the eventual build out of the Osprey Nest. Mm -hmm. And the Osprey Nest, uh, is, well, it's a whole lot of things at once. Uh, it's, I, I don't want to short sell it by saying that it's, uh, that it's multi-purpose because it's a lot more than that, really. It does, yeah. I don't know, I guess, I at, least, at least five things that you guys listed off, and there's probably more besides that. So maybe you go into what, this is, what the Osprey's Nest is. Yeah, it, it's a place that we can gather. So there's a, a full service restaurant there which has indigenous elements added to the menu on the food side. I mean, we're going to be able to cater out of there. Catering is a big budget big item in our annual uh, budget discussions but there's also four luxury lofts where we're going to be able mm -hmm. to offer housing and we've struck a deal with interior health in the province of british columbia so we're going to be able to offer those luxury lofts out to professionals and help us in this recruitment piece of the conversation around mm -hmm. getting more professionals to the city of williams lake to service the caribou regional district you know how do we do our part to contribute to that discussion it's uh, by building things that will entice them to come and want to stay. And so Michael, just to speak to your side of things with design, uh, it was a smaller space that you managed to get lofts, a restaurant, a meeting space, and it faces a lake. So maybe you could explain all the design aspects of that, or not yeah. all, but as much as you can. Yeah. Uh, the project is 7,000 square feet total over three floors. Mm -hmm. And as Chief Willie Seller said, it's a gathering space on the main level uh, because right next to Scout Island, there was no place to kind of eat or sit or to look out at the lake. We, we had turned the back on the lake, which was, you know, the reason for starting mm -hmm. spaces at, 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 in, in earlier times. So it's the it's it's a it's it's coming back to the shoreline was really the, the idea of saying that this lower floor has the ability to gather and then offer a, a, a better way to look at how to change the stay uh, mm -hmm. in Williams Lake. Uh, you know, a lot of great motels and hotels. I stay at a beautiful motel, you know, very economical. But the idea of what you're getting uh, now in cities are not really there anymore. They're, they're inside the city. You're, you're not seeing the water. And so these lofts, these two level lofts, 900 square foot lofts, 450 square foot per, per floor with catering to someone who wants to be enticed to move a family there is really something that hasn't been there. It's a catalyst mm -hmm. for change. I think for all uh, ways of looking at how to offer spaces um, uh, in Williams Lake. So the notion of these lofts, these four lofts above, which has like a spa-like quality for the bathrooms for that, is really to say, this is what we can offer. It's always been there. And until someone wants to put forward a little bit more to show what you can do in an area, it will, it will bring people forward. I think people forget it's only an hour and 20 minute flight from Vancouver. Mm -hmm. like, it's, like it's faster than driving to Surrey. Like it's it's really so close and with the new hospital and what this means, um, the character of how that land is going to be developed and what the Osprey Nest will, will do to bring people to stay by the water is going to help people reflect on why 
they don't have more residences down at the water or businesses. So, I mean, we, have, we have access to every biogeochromatic zone within an hour of Williams Lake. It's a gorgeous place to live. You know, it is an affordable place to live. And it's by building stuff like this that will encourage more people to move and s celebrate it with us, which is what we want. We want to contribute to the greater good of the region. And, and, and that's what partnering up and, and having a relationship with indigenous communities can potentially do to, a, to an economy and to a territory. Okay. And you also mentioned there's a mass timber uh, project. So yes. you were able to and kind of had to yeah. do all the earthwork beforehand and get it ready for the mass timber because it would be quicker yes. to put in. Yeah. So the project is a design build. So we were literally after we decided on a simple rectangular plan that worked for the program, the 80 by 50, they, they dug it, they prepped it. And with Lauren Brothers Construction, the ability uh, also mass timber is lighter. So we picked a material also it's from the region. So the, so, so the wood really helps also create this character of the water. It's also part of what uh, uh, actually Chief Sellers and the band is building out also better, uh, better places for having the offices, better places for living accommodations. And because of being mass timber, it has so many other benefits from, a, from a, just from a buildable uh, quickness point of view. And also it's just a beautiful material mm -hmm. and it's also a BC material. So to, to, to choose it, it was economically feasible and it was also made within uh, range to just bring it, design it and bring it on site quickly. And I guess finally I'd ask, um, how, how close is it to done? Because it sounds like it's quite close. Uh, and then what are the next steps after this? Yeah, the luxury lofts will be ready to move into mid-June. The uh, restaurant will have a soft opening mid-July with the grand opening uh, mid-August. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks for listening to the Construction Record Podcast. You can hear us on Apple Music, Amazon, and Spotify, as well as at theconstructionrecord.libsyn.com and on the daily commercial news and journal commerce websites. Thanks again for listening.